more beautiful machine than this? At Tech Modified, we say yes. And today is the day that you will join others from around the globe and learn how to build the most beautiful RGB gaming machine. RGB, those letters should have new meaning for us all today. We will not go quietly into the night. We will not game without the light. We're going to shine on. We're going to thrive. Today, together, we build the ultimate RGB gaming machine. So before we crack on with this build, guys, we're gonna need some tools and equipment. First of all, we're gonna use the trusty Phillips head screwdriver. We've got this in three sizes. We also have a flathead screwdriver, a blade to cut open boxes, a pair of scissors, and a container to put our screws in so we don't lose them throughout the build. So for our motherboard, we have decided to go with the ASUS ROG Strix Z370E gaming motherboard. ASUS was the first company to incorporate lighting sync technology on their boards. They also had the largest amount of compatible products on the market that incorporate Aura Sync. The Z370E Gaming is the highest end of the ROG Strix Z370 segment. This board comes with two RGB headers and also a new addressable header on the bottom. This made our motherboard selection very easy. This board is sporting a new colour theme with a sleek heatsink design. But if this colour scheme's not quite for your tasting, there's plenty of other options in the Z370 range with different colour schemes and features. So for the particular CPU in this build, we're going with Coffee Lay. In particular, the i5-8600K. Alright, to install your CPU, identify the bottom corner with the golden triangle. Take the latch, push your finger down gently, and your latch will pop up and very gently peel back the cover. Take the golden triangle and place it into the corner of your CPU socket. Once the corner is firm, grab the rest of it and gently lower into position. This should sit nice and firmly. You can give it a little wiggle and then simply close your shutter and your latch and your plastic cover should just pop off. So when it comes to RGB RAM on the market, you guys are spoiled for choice. However, personally, I've got a huge soft spot for the G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM. So thanks to G-Skill, we've got 32 gigabytes of it here, ready to install. The RAM is equipped with addressable RGB LEDs and also compatible with Aura Sync technology. So our set will be running at 3200 MHz and the lighting options really do give you a lot of abilities to customise your look as you'll see in some of the other recent builds we've done. So for storage we wanted something fast and we chose the Gamix S10 M.2 SSD with a read of 1800 MB a second and a write of up to 850. Even though this particular M.2 is not RGB, we have the beautiful shield on the ROG Z370E gaming motherboard to cover it up. That way we get a great mix of style and performance. So now I'm going to go ahead and install the, our XPG Gamix S10 M.2 SSD under the actual shield here in the corner. So I'm going to remove the three screws from the shield that the M.2 will sit under. Ensuring that I put them in my container so I don't lose them. Once the screws are undone, simply lift up and remove the shield. Now your motherboard will also come with a little standoff like this which you simply screw into your designated position. Then you take your M.2 and at a 45 degree angle, gently push it into the slot and lower the rear. You'll also have a fixture screw that comes with the motherboard pack, which you gently tighten. Then you'll take your M.2 shield and put it back over and reattach your three screws. Just ensure that your screws are nice and firm. Now for our choice of case today, we have gone with the Inwin 303 RGB edition. The Inwin 303 is a solid steel with tempered glass front panel. It's simple, elegant, and now with the added touches of RGB on the front. 
This clean, minimalistic design will be a great foundation for our RGB build. So the first thing we're going to do with our case is uh, actually take off the tempered glass panel, set it aside so we don't get it damaged during the build process or accidentally knock it over. And we'll also remove the back panel as well. Now pretty much every case these days comes with a little bag or box of goodies. These are going to include our standoff screws for our motherboard installation. So let's go ahead now and get these installed. We'll take our Phillips head screwdriver and use the attachment that came with the pack of the case and install our motherboard standoffs in nine designated positions inside the case. Now whilst we're in the case too, we're going to take our motherboard IO shield and install it. We put it in position. Supply pressure and just make sure it lines up nicely. One thing with the Inwin 303 that I've learnt from experience is that there's no actual underpass area to run any of your power switch cables or your USB 3.0 cables. So, what I'm doing in advance here is going to be running through my USB 3.0, my power switch, and my power LED cords as well. Now, before we install the motherboard into the case, whilst we've got lots of room, we quickly wanted to show you the RGB strips and also the headers on the motherboard and how to install your strips. So, as shown before, we've got multiple headers on this motherboard. With your traditional cable mod RGB strips, all you need to do is take an attachment making sure that any arrows are pointing towards the voltage. In this case, it's the 12 volt plus symbol on the RGB strip. In this case, I'll be running an extension. To connect this to the motherboard, simply line up the arrow to the 12 volt plus on the motherboard header. Later on, when starting up your software, you'll be able to see this LED strip as one of your options. One thing you're probably wondering is what is addressable LED strips? Well, in an individual addressable LED strip, the LEDs each have a companion IC to give them what every parent wants their children to have, independence and intelligence. Now what this means for your effects is that you can individually address each individual LED with the right software. What this means for you is some really sick lighting effects. Because the addressable LEDs are different, ASUS will also include this connector coming with your motherboard. The first side of which connects directly to the motherboard with the arrow pointing at the 5 volt plus. The second attachment will come with your cable mod LED strip. This simply clicks in and then you connect the arrow symbol to your addressable LED strip. Remembering to make sure that you do connect it on the 5 volt plus side. Now later on when we go to the Aura utility software, you'll be able to see this as an individual lighting sync option. So I'll go ahead now and install the motherboard and hopefully get getting it looking nice and neat. So these days, when it comes to RGB fans, we're absolutely spoiled for choice. But because we've got an addressable header on the Z370E gaming motherboard, we're gonna be going with the Thermaltake Ring Plus 12 fans. The next step is to plan the airflow through your case. You want cold air coming from the front or the bottom, and hot air going out the back or the side. In this particular case, we're gonna have three 120 millimeter intake fans on the bottom, pulling air up through the case, and then we're gonna have an exhaust at the side and two exhausts out the top, pushing back in through the back panel. Before we install the case fans into the case, we wanna identify which way the airflow will be going. A lot of your fans will have little directional arrows on the side, However, if they don't, a little bit of a guideline, when you see the nicer sticker, that's gonna be pulling air through straight out the back. We remove the feet and the bottom filter off the 303, then ensuring our fans are facing the right direction, install with the four screws provided. After that, we reinstall the feet to the case. These days you can also get some RGB power supplies, however, we're gonna be using the Inwin C900W. This is a top mount power supply in the Inwin 303, so we don't have to worry about any RGB up there, but we will have RGB fans blowing to that area. Now, power cords can look exceptionally confusing, but what we're gonna do is break it down and see what our system actually requires, install them into the power supply, and then install the power supply into the case. Okay, to go over some of the power cords that we're gonna be needing for this, we're gonna need a 24 pin for the motherboard. 
Also going to the motherboard, we're going to need the CPU power. This is split into two by four pin EPS connections. For the graphics card we're using, we're going to be needing one PCIe eight pin connector. We're going to be using Molex for power for other components within the system and also SATA power. For the rest of your cables, simply put them away in the power supply bag that came with your power supply, that way you're not going to lose them. And also if you do upgrade your graphics card later, you know where you can find your extra power cables. We're also going to be using some cable extensions from Cable Mod to really reflect that RGB lighting we're going to have inside the case. To install the power supply, slide it into position and then screw it in. Now before we go any further in this build, we're going to have a look and see where we're going to run our next cables. In this case, we're going to be running the 24 pin through one of these holes. And then we'll use the top hole up here to run the CPU power. Making sure that it does clip in all the way. Now somehow I don't think onboard graphics are going to be the best option for us. So instead we've got ourselves an ASUS Strix GTX 1060. The ASUS Strix GeForce GTX 1060 is also Aura Sync compatible. So later on when we get the software installed, we'll be able to customise the LED lighting on the graphics card. Identify the slots you'll be using, remove the covers, and then also remove the PCIe protective cover. Very gently slide the graphics card into position and reinstall the previous screws. Now we're going to be installing the cable mod addressable LED strips in the 303. Now these cable mod strips also have a 3M backing. This is one of the magnetic ones and because it's a solid steel chassis, I can simply just click on and run my cable exactly where it needs to go. That easy. Ah, that's better. Now it's pretty water cool. All bad jokes aside, I've installed a custom water loop for the CPU instead of using the all-in-one CPU cooler. We mounted the fans directly to the radiator using the screws provided and then mounted it to the case. Being an RGB build, I couldn't help but put an RGB strip into the reservoir as well. Now before we get to the fun job of our cable management, we're just going to quickly set up and install our operating system that way we don't have to come back and redo the cables if there is a mistake. Alright, so now we have Windows installed and we're about to get on with our cable management which is obviously going to be a very, very fun job but before we do that, we're going to set up our Thermaltake ring fans because these are actually going to be separate to our Aura software. Firstly, we're going to install our Molex power to both units. Now that we have Molex power installed, with our little dip switches on the end, we're going to adjust one of them to one. This means the controller is actually going to work in unison, being controller 0 and controller 1. Next we'll connect our USB 2.0 9-pin connector, which will be going straight to the motherboard. This will allow the software to talk directly to the fans. Our last step is to connect our fans to the controllers. Ah, cable management, we meet again. So for this step, we're going to be needing our scissors and also some zip ties. So we're going to start off by grouping our main sets of cables together and then finding areas that we can actually run them all, which doesn't interfere with airflow or anything else in the case. Now every RGB gaming machine needs some epic peripherals to match, so we have chosen the ASUS ROG Claymore Mechanical Gaming Keyboard and to pair with that a ROG Spartha Mouse, both of which are completely Aura Sync compatible. Now we need to get our Aura Sync software to make all our RGB beautiful. One of the quickest ways to do this is to go to the ASUS webpage and find your specific motherboard. From there you can go and actually go to support and utilities and download the Aura Sync software. Because we're running two ecosystems in our build, we'll also be getting the Thermaltake Ring Plus software. Okay, software is now installed, so let's start her up. Oh my god. It's beautiful. It's more than beautiful. It's RGB. <laughs>
After installing our software and rebooting our computer, we are now ready to play with our Aura software. Here you can go through and customize each individual Aura Sync compatible product and also if you like, synchronize them all completely together. This is a lot of fun to play with and you can really customize a lot of different features. This is where you can really personalize it and make it your own. Now if unicorns and rainbows aren't quite your style, this is where you'll be able to customize and really personalize all your Aura Sync compatible products to fit your personal needs. Well I hope you guys have all learnt a lot and remember RGB isn't always about rainbows and unicorns. Its best feature is that it can allow you to personalize and adjust your color scheme to really reflect who you are as a gamer.